Howdy folks, how are we all doing? It is Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021? Yeah, I had to make sure my date was right. So I'm actually over at the Lost Creek Reserve in Noop Agricultural Heritage Center. So this is both a nature preserve and a heritage center too. This is actually where the Miami County Park District is based at. Essentially, this is where their office is located. But as part of this video, I actually want to point out some of the history that is here. So, a well-known pioneer by the name of John Noop, he settled here back in the mid-1800s or so, approximately, maybe even before that. But he was one of the first pioneers who lived in this area. And you can only imagine back then how rural it used to look at the time with a lot more woods going on. And so John Noop, he saw that this was great land for an opportunity to basically have agriculture. So what I'm going to do in this video is sort of introduce a bit of his property that is found here. So here we go. So the first barn that I want to point out is known as the Tack Barn. Essentially what was in it was something known as a forge. So basically equipment such as that of hinges and wagon parts, they would be made in this barn right here. I'm sure during particular times of the year, they actually have these barns open for any tours. But at the moment, that is not available. Okay. So the next one is the hay barn. Also known as the, well, as I like to call it, the tobacco barn. You may be wondering, like, why is it so tall? Well, there's a particular reason for that. You know, with processing tobacco, there's something called tobacco drying, which basically involves where you have the tobacco plant itself, and they would oftentimes be very tall, and they would have to be hung so that they could dry. Because for those of you who I'm sure have cigarettes, the tobacco is dry. It's not in its pure form. And so having it dry is what enables it to be incorporated into cigarettes. And this is also where the hay was kept. Hi. <laughs> so that's the reason that is that's it is believed that this barn is a bit taller, which was for that exact purpose. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. Alrighty, so now we're at the bank barn. You may be thinking, what exactly does a bank barn mean? Well, a bank barn, this is the largest barn on the property. And it is suggested that this has a German or Swiss heritage, which I believe John Noop was within that relation. I mean, you can tell it's probably been renovated ever since it was built. But a bank barn was used for a couple of reasons. For one thing, any livestock would be kept in here so that it would remain safe from any other uh, predators, such as that of wolves, for example, which were very prevalent during that time. But then the upper level, too, which is actually where you see that window there, that was actually used for storing crops, too. So that's why you can see that it's a larger barn. And it actually tells you a bit further about what this place was really used for. But it was a warm place in the winter, and it was cool during the summer. So it's quite neat. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's been renovated ever since it was built. But 
Yeah, I mean, I think here in this section is where the animals were actually kept. But you have to admire the property here. Plenty of courtyard space. And it's just, it gives you a real rural lifestyle. Yeah, here's another barn right here. Kind of tells you a bit about the weather vane, what it used to indicate. It's a homage. Ah, so it actually tells you about a hitching post. It was basically where you would tie a team of horses. Because back during that time, horse and buggy was the main method of transportation. And this is actually where the buggies were stored. Especially like in the early 1800s, when horse and buggies were just beginning, sometimes people kept their own personal buggies. Okay, okay. So this is where I started just a little bit ago. This is the corn crib. So this is essentially where corn was stored. Because during that time, in the early 1800s, corn was a huge crop. It still is to this day. And John Noop was one of those pioneers who actually respected the Native Americans. And sometimes they would provide them with corn. And sometimes if corn was a bit scarce, John would actually be generous enough to offer some of his corn to any of the other fellow Native Americans who were still in the area right here. Okay, moving on. Alrighty, so now we're over by the homestead at the moment. So it actually tells you a bit about the history too, you know. So you figure it was around 1800 actually that he came around here. But it wasn't until Actually, I believe, let's see, yeah, it wasn't until actually 1883 when the original brick home was torn down and they actually built this Victorian style home, which has been used by generations. And as a matter of fact, now... It is essentially where the Miami County Park District office is located. Alrighty, so here is the front of the establishment. This is the Victorian style home. Yeah, it's just so nice to look at, you know. Crazy to think that this is basically a building that is nearly 140 years old. Remarkable, isn't it? You wouldn't even think of it, but it is true. I mean, of course, renovations have happened since then, but still. You don't find many homes that are really that old. Oh, yep, we got ourselves some black walnut right up here. They're starting to develop right there. Very important type of tree found in this area. Completely edible. However, you don't want to eat the uh, surface part. You want to actually get down to the walnut. And they also stain your fingers <laughs> pretty bad. But yeah, it's just the Noop Homestead has an absolutely gorgeous uh, courtyard that you can walk through. I mean, me personally, if I had to, you know, if I had the option of living out here, I would do it. Most definitely. I mean, it almost feels like you're, you're at an arboretum, you know, just based on the variety of trees that you have out here. You know, like the black walnut. Or we've got ourselves a sugar maple right up here. For those of you who read that sign just a bit ago, that is the actual Noop Cemetery right over here. So, John actually had a mother 
by the name of Mary Noop, and she is actually buried here. She was the very first person to be buried here. So you figure there are generations worth of the Noop family that is here. But yeah, Mary Noop was buried here practically way back in 1803, I believe. And that's remarkable to me because that was the year when Ohio became incorporated as a state. Oh yeah, American Beach. You can start to see the seed develop. But yeah. And here we go. Kind of tells you a bit more about the cemetery right here. So you guys are more than welcome to pause the video and read this sign if you so wish. But essentially what it's saying here is the Newt family was one of the first families in this area of Troy. And a lot of the family members have actually invested some of their savings and they helped with the development of the town of Troy. But yeah. So alrighty. I thought I would share that with you guys. Hope you learned something. It's a pop this is a popular site over near Troy. So forgive me for how my voice has sounded. I've been a bit low congested lately. It happens a lot when any seasonal change occurs since we just got into summer. So all right, mates, forgive the length of the video, but plenty to share, right? So once again, Journey on a Journey is outwards. Take care, folks.